We had a lot of questions about um, culture, sales team. If I look at like the most common questions some of us have, have mentioned or heard or like people are trying to do, it, we had, it was in relation to sales teams and culture and training and getting a team up to speed. So I just want to walk through what we do at our office with both of our sales teams um, really quick. And just so you can see kind of the processes. So we have some of those, like 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 Iker was talking about yesterday, we, we have some of those, uh, and Malang was talking about too, some of those systems and processes now, but we didn't always know what those were. And so now in our office, and I realize it's a little different on, on the secure insurance group side, obviously hiring agents on our side, hiring someone to either sell, be on our marketing sales team or our training sales team. Um, but, but what we do is uh, we, have a, we have an initial interview which is conducted by Andy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and if he, you know, if, if they like did some research and, and, and he likes what he sees, then he, he sets up a, I actually, especially if it's sales related, I have him go send them the disc assessment while we're waiting on the second interview, okay? And a disc assessment, for those who don't know, DI, who knows what disc assessment is, by the way? Okay, some of us. So a disc assessment is D-I-S-C. I think it's really important when you're hiring salespeople, and, and you, there's other ones too, like Nate uses a different one, which is fine. But D is like, okay, drive, determination, like, it, you know, they, they, they're aggressive, they're self-starter, you know, they'll do whatever it takes. Um, I is like influential, social, uh, they can influence people into making decisions. They can work a room. They're great personality. S is more service related. C is more compliance related. So like for in our office, sales, sales people and project managers, really sales people, project managers, service department, project managers, and engineers, you know. And so for me, I took a paper disc that was a little longer one time, and I was 100 on a D and a 90 on an I, and then my S and C were lower, you know, middle probably. Uh, which doesn't mean I'm uncompliant, it just means I've got a little more drive than compliance, I guess. Uh, or service, you know, that's not my forte, I guess. So, so we have them do that. I need their leading letter to be a D or an I. Okay, so if their leading letter is not a D or an I, I'm like, Andy, there's no reason to have them back. Okay, don't, don't bring them back for a second interview. Because they're never going to make it, it's, they're typically never going to make it in sales. Why? Because they're going to want to be more service related or computer related than, than actually being a self-starter and, and making calls we don't want to, or they're not gonna be able to influence people in making a decision, right? I know closing, you can train a lot of stuff, but if they don't have some type of natural ability of being good with people, I can't train, I can't train a personality, right? So uh, then we bring them in for a second interview. To so bring them in for a second interview, uh, what, 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 do we, what do we do then? You, you, uh, That's where I have either the sales team or one of the directors of our team meet <coughs> with them to see if they would mesh and gel well. Okay, yeah, so with the director, there we go. Um, to see what they think, if everybody likes them, then, then, we, then, then you end up calling them back and hire them, right? Okay, so that's the, that, that's, that's the process of actually hiring a specific salesperson. Do you think it'd be valuable to, if you're not doing an, like an in face interview, to maybe call people on Indeed or have a phone call, just to send them the disc before you even do the first interview, just to kind of? Yeah, because there's a free, free, there's a free version on Tony Robbins' website. Um, it'll at least tell you their leading letter. Um, but yeah, and, and if I was doing them remotely, I would absolutely be doing them on Zoom. They can't show up for Zoom, they're never gonna make it, right? So I'm actually putting obstacles in their way. Like one of my favorite scenes from a movie was, uh, the, one of my favorite movies of all time is the movie uh, A Miracle, uh, uh, the, the 1980 hockey team, uh, USA hockey team, and Miracle on Ice. And in that movie, what does he do? He gives everybody like a hundred page exam or test to see who's going to do the exam and who's not and he actually liked the goalie that didn't because he's like dude i'll do whatever i want you know but otherwise he wanted people that did the exam and did the test you know and and he wanted to like he really he, he threw them away when he got them right but it was just the thought of okay i want them to jump through some hoops um so so after we go through this then once they're hired we set up a shadow day this is in our office even though they're 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 employees W-2, the shadow day is unpaid. So it's, it's a half day to a full day and it's always on a Friday. So that we do, and, and, it, and we don't have to pay for it, it's, a, it's like a training day, uh, the Friday before they start on a Monday. And so shadow days are always on a Friday. 
um, fin finish the week. They're able to go over the weekend and learn some more, and then they're ready to be back in a Monday and, and continue to improve. Okay, so when we do a shadow day, we have them, we have them do a lot of stuff, dude. What, uh, what, what, what all do they do? Uh, coming in the morning, and they're really just part of everything that our team does, trainings, meetings, meeting the team. Um, then we take them through our video library about our company. Um, it explains who everybody is, who they are <coughs> for certain things, what they're selling, what the company's about. Um, and then what they do is they go through several different stations where they'll get with one of our team leads. They will go over the script. They will role play the script. They will listen to a different uh, different calls during that day. So like recordings? Uh, recordings. Recordings, whether it's a lead call, whether it's a marketing <coughs> call. And then towards the end of the day, then they'll do training again, they'll do lunch. And then they'll actually come back and that afternoon will be focused on them actually getting on HubSpot, getting on our CRM, and calling their team lead, but they're set up at the station with the headset, going over the script, whether it's leads or marketing. So mock calls. Okay, good. And they're walking through the script. Good. Okay, so so then they're coming in on a also on this chat on. Uh, do I normally get up and, and, and say like what I'm looking for on a Friday or a Monday? Uh, Monday morning when they start. Fridays. Fridays. Well, you do it both, really. Yeah. Because <laughs> oh, that's true. Is they show up on Every Friday day. and then they see what's involved. Yeah. And some of them don't show up on Monday, but if they yeah. do show up on. No, I, I don't want them to, you know what I mean? So we actually, we, we, we push them to not show up on Monday a little bit. Um, but what they, they can get engrossed in the culture. And so one of the things, couple things that we do too that, that help with someone to last is not only do we have them do the disc, not only do we have them meet some of the team, but on the shadow day, there, there's, there's really two things that happen. So I, I get up and actually speak. Um, sometimes we'll have two people starting, one, three, four, whatever, in front of the whole team, but, but it's directed to new people. And I'm having, I'm having, I'm actually leading with some of the tough stuff, and then I'm having some of the other teams speak on some of the other things. So, for example, um, I will talk about the three things that we look for, and if they have these, they'll be successful. And then I talk about some of the integrity pieces that are, you know, we, that that are that are they're kind of our rules, right? Our house rules. So, as far as the three things, I, I let them know that we look for individuals that are reliable. Right, you know, so I'm like, hey, dude, if you get, if you got a tummy ache and you don't show up, you're never gonna make it, right? So, so you know, we look for people that are going to show up every single day, whether, whether they feel like it or not, they're showing up, right? And I, I allude, hey, I realize it's a different world right now. If you got a fever, right, or you think you got COVID anyway, don't show up. However, show up, okay? So, so we talk a lot about being reliable, and I elaborate on that. Um, th then we talk about because I want to set that stage from the beginning, and they don't they don't see us miss work, you know what I mean? So. Um, I expect them to show up. Like Derek and Tucker, you can ask them. And they, they, if they're, you know, they don't show up, I'm FaceTiming Derek at freaking 8.30. Like, dude, are you dying? You, you know, you, you on your way? Like, what's up? Um, the the second, second thing I talk about is being, is being coachable. So I let them know. I'm like, hey, how, how much experience do you have? Um, and so, so the guy the day is like, dude, I've been, I've been selling for like, you know, 15 years. I ran a department and all that. And I'm like, dude, you probably won't make it here. He's like, why? I'm like, because we do things my way and if you don't listen and do what I say my way works your current way I promise you won't and and you know if you don't listen I'm not I'm, I'm gonna get rid of you so you know this way works we do it we do things well you know I'm like hey dude my, you know Mike made 15 grand last month but because why because he, he did what we said and, and if you don't you're never gonna make it right so I talked through being coachable right and some of this it's pretty direct right it really is uh, but why? Because it gets you in control from the get-go. Most people are, are scared to set that stage with their sales team. And I've learned that if we don't from the beginning, we'll never get it back. And to that point, if we're not direct right up front, we get so frustrated a day and a half later <coughs> because we've wasted our time. Like, I can't tell you. I, I used to be, it used to be really tough because I would look at kind of the human side of things of like, oh, maybe give this guy a chance or whatever. And now I'm like, all right, this guy's not going to make it. Like, Cody, I'm getting frustrated. I don't even want to, you know, try to do my job because yeah. they're interrupting me every two minutes. Uh, but if we're not as direct as possible with that coachable aspect, uh, then it hurts us literally 36 hours later because the people suck. 
Yeah, so, so now the rest of the team is coming to me like, hey, I think you should get rid of this guy. I'm not even having to do it. You know, like that's the kind of culture environment we have. Um, the, th the, the, the third one I talk through is work ethic. Um, and I tell them, hey, if, if, if you can't like put in the dials and focus and really put in the work, you know, we, 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 it, it won't, won't work because these are the three things that we need for people that we know if you follow them, you'll be successful, right? And if you won't, you won't be successful. And you know, if you're not making money, you're, you don't wanna be here anyway. So uh, we talk through these. And then we move on to um, the, in, the integrity pieces. Some of the things that I always say, hey, you know, like, like I, I, there's no negativity allowed um, in our office. We have some signs. I think you may have saw some of them through the office. No negativity allowed. Uh, Derek probably put some of those up. Um, I tell them, hey, there, no drama, no negativity. You're whining, you're coming in, complaining about your dog. Nobody cares, okay? So let's, 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 we, we actually that pretty quick. Um, and, and, and it can fester in a sales room. I think that stuff can grow. And before you know it, it's like, everybody's freaking whining. And we've had that, uh, I would say a year and a half ago, I was, I, w I would say even nine, I would say one year ago, because I think I took back over my sales team about one year ago, I was not proud of my sales team. And Landon and I were having some trouble with the sales team. And I said, hey, I'm taking it back over. And because we really, there was, wasn't really leadership, we're letting them do their own thing. And, and when you leave salespeople to their own devices, they do whatever the freak they want, and they don't do what you want them to do. I can promise you that. So um, we took it back over, and, and it's really changed. Um, the other thing I talked through is um, no, li no lying. I let them know from the get-go, like, if I ever catch you lying, period, you're immediately let go. We won't talk about it. I don't care what you said. I don't care why you lied. It, 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 we don't, we're not put up with it. I'm, you know, I'm like, I, I was raised better than that, and it's not going to happen, okay? Um, and then the third piece is... Uh, no cursing. That's a tough one in a sales environment, in a sales room, but it's, uh, you, you don't hear me curse um, and I don't want to hear you curse. So yeah, does it slip every once in a while? But when they do, they catch it or they're like, Cody, I apologize, it won't happen again. You know, like it's a thing and, and it's a good thing because it, like when you guys were walking through the freaking office yesterday, who, who wants to hear my sales team throwing around freaking F-bombs all day? Like nobody does, you know? Um, so we talk through these things. Then we I have them stand up and introduce themselves, which can be a little intimidating when you're a newbie coming into a room of 19 salespeople and you got to introduce yourself and speak up and tell us where you're from and all that. Uh, that can be that can be a little intimidating. So we set the tone there. And then I have the, the most senior sales reps, like a Derek, jump up and kind of tell their story of how they were working at Hudson Hawk down the street and booking haircuts and and now you know making eight bucks an hour and now they're gonna make six figures, you know, and, and they talk through like why they love being here. Um, and I don't have to make it up, like, you know, they wouldn't stay with me if, in Lane if they didn't, you know what I mean? So, um, so then, the, but, so we set the stage, but then we, I finish it with positive so that they can feel how amazing an opportunity it really, really is deep down and, and how their life can and will change if they just do, a, do what we say and, and stick to this. And then as far as, real quick, as far as daily stuff that we do, um, every single day we have an entire team meeting at 8.30 a.m. Now we've been doing it outside uh, eight, from 8.40 to 9 and 1.30 to 1.50 are both sales meetings, sales trainings every single day, right? So, so in, those, in those daily sales trainings, we are watching sales training videos. So for example, I have a new CA sales system with 400 modules and quizzes for insurance sales teams. Um, and then we, outside of the CA sales system, we're doing some role playing because I don't want them jumping on the phones first, first call and sucking, right? N nobody wants that. Because um, it could be a great opportunity and they can make a lot of money and then they blow it, right? Um, then we're doing some type of energy activity. I'm a big believer in, in, a, in a sales room, the energy's everything. So jumping jacks, push-ups, something twice a day. And it's, it's, yeah, maybe it's like a military boot camp, but the, it's fun, the energy's great, and people love it, and they're getting more in shape. You know, they're running half marathons with me now. Uh, and then the uh, last thing is this, they, they do some type, of some type of one, two, three team sells the Ric Flair, woo, I mean, they, they do all kind of stuff, I don't know, but they, they, they have fun with it. Um, so we do all that twice a day. Um, and that's, it, it, and what it really builds is a, is a culture of, like we could have, 50 salespeople and, and, and this is the model that works and, and it creates consistency, it creates control. Most sales teams don't have discipline. And being around Cardone 
and hit, at his office and getting a tour of that place and being at conferences and different stuff and, and taking it from watching people on YouTube and stuff, you start to take ideas like Lustig said yesterday. And for me, um, you, you start to learn what works. Like I, I made a thousand mistakes over the last three years with salespeople and you start to learn you know, what works. I look like John Madden with a whiteboard. It's just all over the place. But uh, I, 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 we do have a bunch of speakers so I want to get moving, but any questions on any of that? Let me make it, can I make it? Yeah, please. So I've watched Cody do this. And I'll tell you what, one of the things that I was most impressed with is, is we went on a, uh, almost like a six week, like went around the country and we came back to a big mess of lack of culture and lack of excellence and whatever. And maybe that was at the moment where we were like, I know Cody saw like, I don't want this to continue to take place. But it really only took about 10 business days to really <coughs> take a complete 180 with that. Mm -hmm. So if you're already down the road, and you're like frustrated, it really, I'm telling you, if you're like bold, it's almost like breaking a horse. It's like, you gotta like take the reins, but it didn't take that long to turn it back around. Two of the salespeople walked out. Yeah. But I'm glad they did. But it took yeah. two weeks though. So it's like, that's what I was like thinking. It's like, man, it's cancer, now it's gonna take 36 months to rebuild this whole thing, you know? But really, it was like, as long as you, but one of the things that I saw is like, there was just no nonsense, here's what it is. Two people left, it was turned around in 10 days, man. So. It, it takes time to develop that too, like, I used to get ran over so bad by salespeople. Seriously. I, the yeah, commission so structure bad. alone is not enough to motivate them. Period. Mm -hmm. In my opinion. No. It never will be, no matter how big it is, yeah. Quick question. So you they hit the D or the I, right? And so awesome. Correct. When you're trying so and I think this is where we struggle is putting them where they actually need to go. So like for you obviously you got your marketing and then you have your training. Where mm -hmm. what really triggers hey, you're gonna go marketing or you're gonna go here? We put up a job post that's different for each, and depending on which one they respond to. And, we, and I, don't, I don't hire as many salespeople on the CA side. Um, Derek Tucker, we got two more starting Monday, but um, I've, that company's kind of grown smaller and more organically sales-wise, and we've plucked from each team, but, but really they're typically responding to the marketing sales team or a specific job post for a specific organization. And then, but, but sometimes we, 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 in the interviews, I'm like, hey, like, hey I actually think uh, they interview for CA, but they're used to selling websites. They need to be selling marketing, you know? So I'm like, okay, cool. On that, to speak to that turnaround, that kind of 10-day turnaround that Landon was talking about too, uh, we had maybe 50 to 60% of that, this daily process in place already, but that negativity was affecting it. So we were already watching training videos every day, but it wasn't taken seriously. People were making fun of like the video or how it sounded, yep. but then they weren't making sales. Well, and Derek can attest to this. If, if they're on their, that nobody's on their phone, nobody's late. If they show up and they got to take a call, right? Or, or, or even if a client's calling and they can make a sale right now, you can make the same sale in 10 minutes. So I, I like all the time with new people, they're about to walk out on the, or walk, walk, walk in late or walk out on the phone or something like, hey, Sit down, like, you, you know, no phones allowed. Like, we go through some of that early on. But I used to not say something and let it fester. Like, we had two new guys that had a bunch of monitor boxes, and they were, like, lounged out and their feet on monitor boxes, you know, while they're making sales. So the old me would have been like, ah, it's fine, no worries. You know, they're making calls. So I went to Andy and said, hey, go get rid of the monitor boxes and tell them not to do that again. And so he just went and handled it, you know. So, but but if, if I let it go, I'm playing favorites, or before you know it, it's okay, you know. Uh, what do you guys do dress code? Because I noticed, I mean, is that like a big deal in the office? What, how do so you that know? was dressed better than normal because you were all going to our office, to be honest. Um, but I would say it's, it's um, typically business casual, slacks, polo, nice jeans and a polo, some dress shirts. Derek will still wear a suit every once in a while, but I would say generally. You know. And is that something you push or is that something you kind of see as one of those things like, I mean, there's a few things you're going to draw the line on, you know, what you're giving For sure, us. for like, sure. You know what, that's not something I'm really going to, I mean, unless it, we see this consistent pattern, okay, now I'm going to say something, but, yeah. you know, it, but, it, but I, I don't know, where do you rank that as like, yeah, that's a big deal, it's mindset, it's, dude, you know, drive social success, all that stuff. Yeah, it's still a decent deal to me, and actually a bigger reason than that is um, my dad's office, which we didn't have a chance to, wouldn't have time to tour yesterday, is the other 40, 250 square feet on the other side of the building, and he has people come into their office a lot and he gives them tours um, or shows them around or whatever you want to call it. And yeah, that's my Arkansas tour, tours. Uh, <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, and so part of it's like, I don't want to be embarrassment to, to, to his side, 
because we don't really get too many people walking in, you know, marketing tra training in Springfield, Missouri. Ra ra rarely. Uh, we'll have the occasional person just show up, but it's very rare. And, but I still wouldn't real. I wouldn't get to where I allow shorts or flip flops or t-shirts or anything like that personally. So, yeah. No, and, and there was a time. There was there was a time. <laughs> and wearing Kobe jerseys and sandals. <laughs> yeah. Where do you guys used to recruit? Just Indeed, or do you guys do anything special? Just Indeed. Yeah. Just Indeed. Which for for an actual employee is is easier on Indeed. Ten ninety nine. You know, contractor a agent. Not as easy on Indeed. So, and they they don't want you to do it unless you yeah. put some money behind it. So. We've relied a lot on referrals. That's our best source for sure. That's a good point. Our best salespeople were referred by somebody else typically. Derek was referred by his buddy Danny. Um, and we have several people that that's, that's, that's the case. And so uh, there's a call center that I'm coaching right now that's trying to get to like 50 sales reps this year. And I'm like, you know, you have a company, they already have another company with 395 people. And they're like, we're struggling to hire people. I'm like, you got 400, 400 people on payroll they all know somebody that, that you know, would, would join the organization. So they picked up like 40 people just by getting internal referrals. So we do that, we do that a lot actually. So, so when, that, when we're like, hey, we wanna add f three people, first thing we go is like, we mentioned team meeting or Slack or social. We get a lot of activity from social, so. Hey, if you love this, you'll love how to do a presentation for insurance agents. There's a couple pieces of this video that I've never talked about before. It's right here, click on it, you'll love it. Hey, I always talk about uh, my specific Appointment process, the warm up, fact find, present and close, and then the cool down. Okay, I always talk through.